So I've been playing The Sims for a very long time, but I've never in my life have ever had a legacy family this long, where I'm about to embark on generation 17 of the Barry family. Now, I've been playing this family for a very long time, since 2017, when Little Simsy and Always Simming made the Not So Barry Challenge. I did all the 10 gens, and then my friend Nixel made three extra generations of the said Not So Barry. And then I finished those three, and then I started doing the Career Legacy, which was made by Rochelle my other friend and I have to tell you I love the not so very and I love the career legacy that I wanted to continue the family tree to see how far I could take it until my game breaks and so Generation 17 is going to be a style influencer in the Yeehaw country of Chestnut Ridge with an all green abandoned house and I for one find this house probably the most green and the most weird looking that I have built in a very long time but the idea that my sim is going to be a style influencer, we're going to renovate the house over time as we earn money with our career, some off jobs, some odd jobs, whatever it might be, so we can make the house the way we want it and make it all yeehaw in the end of generation 17. But hopefully we get there eventually. I don't know, but let's build this house. So when I tell you I really love this family more than anything, I truly mean it. Because in my entire Sims journey of 23 years, I have never in my life had a legacy family this large. So getting close to 17 generations means the world to me. I have played through all 10 gens of the Not So Berry Challenge that was created by my friend Little Simsy and Always Simming, and then three extra gens, my friend Nixel, and then my friend Rochella made the career legacy. Like having a way to do where each gen is a different career, skill, world, whatever it is, is always fun. But what's so unique about both challenges is that there's always a backstory or like a twist and a turn to it that you're not expecting, where one gen might be, you know, running away from home as a teenager and moving to, to the city, or one gen wants to be like a chef or an astronaut or like a painter or whatever it might be, but it's always different. And I think the one thing that we all have a hard time doing is like trying to complete 10 generations, but we don't know how to do it. And I think doing it through a challenge setting where you're doing your own thing, like a different career or a different aspiration can kind of spice it up a little bit. And with the career legacy challenge, it's where each generation is a different career. But what's so unique about it is that there is a new skill set, a new career, a new like backstory, new side quests, a lot of twists and turns. That when Rochella made this challenge, I didn't think I was gonna do it because I'm like, I don't know, I'm like not really feeling it just yet. But looking more into it and watching her play on like YouTube and Twitch, I'm like, I'm actually invested and I wanna play it myself. And at the time I was doing the Not So Berry and I was like at generation 12 or, or 13 of um, Not So Berry for the extended version that I was looking for a challenge to continue, but also made sense and Career Legacy made sense. So I rolled for gen 14 of Career Legacy, which was a painter. And then the next gen was a social media star. And then the third gen was, which we're currently on right now after we're gonna be finishing, is I think they're like a scientist or, or something. They're, oh no, they are, they're an engineer. They're an engineer, that's what they are. And at the time, we were gonna move into this house that we're building right now for today for the engineer career for Career Legacy. And then I thought to myself, what if the previous gen inherited this house and then passed it down to the next gen to live in? So for this current gen, for gen 17, we're going to basically be a style influencer we're living in an abandoned house in the Yeehaw country. And since we're like an influencer, we love style. The idea is that we're gonna change our house over time as we earn money, like taking out the carpet, replace it with hardwood floors, taking the mirror off of the ceiling, which I use with Tool Mod by Twisted Mexi. And then like changing out like all the furniture and the lights and the doors and the wallpaper. Like we're gonna change everything for this house to make it the Yeehaw house that we deserve and want but in a different like idea style that makes sense. And whenever we finish it, we might have more packs and I might be able to like make it more nicer looking on the inside rather than the outside. And I don't know, we're just gonna play it by ear. Now, the difference between this challenge and the Not So Berry, I feel is like 
you can add in like a wheel spin to like do different things each day in your game. But I think I want to keep all of my challenges that I play with my family simple, but also chaotic, but also challenging, if that makes sense. So what Rochelle does is that she added in where you have to roll for how many kids you're supposed to have each generation. And for the first gen, we had one kid. Second gen, we had two. And then this current gen for gen like 16, we have, have to have five kids, five kids. And I do not like that at all because ever since we did, I think it was gen 12 or something. I can't really, I think it was gen 12. No, no, it was gen 11. It was gen 11 of the not so berry. It all goes back. Gen 11 of, of not so berry. I'm not joking. We were like, oh, what if we just spice up a little bit and have some fun? We end up having a kid, I think, with um, uh, Rory from Werewolves, from that that new that pack that we got a while back ago. We end up having a werewolf baby. Named it, I think I named it Bella or something like that. And then we end up having, you know, a kid for the next, you know, not so berry gen, which was like Bella was the brown gen. And then the black gen was a vampire named Renesame. So yeah, I was in my twilight era, but knowing that we had a baby with Rory also signified that we were tied to Christopher, who was also from the werewolf pack, who is Rory's father. And then every single gen after um, gen 11, after having a kid with Rory, every kid, and I mean every single kid we've had has been a supernatural being whether they were a vampire or a werewolf but the funny thing is generation 14 of the Barry family was a hybrid I'm not joking a hybrid it's a glitch in the game where you are basically half one is supernatural and the other half is no supernatural we're not supposed to have that so gen 14 ended up being a half werewolf half vampire but it glitched my game so badly to the point where it kept breaking that I had to like null nullify his uh, vampire side. And when I did that, I'm not joking. When I did that, my Sim was invisible. He was invisible as a werewolf. So as one does, goes into create a Sim to like figure out what's going on, looking like Bugs Bunny adjacent. And my Sim had literally no clothes. Like my game was just like, was wild and all of a sudden I had to figure out something put some clothes on him and like divert the whole situation so we end up basically I think hearing his werewolf side at some point but he's no longer living which is great because that was messy he had to go and then the next gen was a werewolf thankfully but we didn't actually do anything with him before, like, his, like, werewolf side to make him immortal. So he ended up dying as well, which is great because I don't need no more chaos. So the current gen that we're playing right now, which as an engineer, he is a werewolf, but he has the dormant werewolf gene. So it's not active until he goes into that lake at a full moon in that one world that we have. And I have yet to do that because I don't want any more werewolves at all. But here's the thing, since we have the dormant werewolf gene, every single kid we have had in Gen 16 as an engineer have been occult children. All of them. And I mean, all of them are werewolves. And I'm like, I don't want that. <laughs> I really do not like occult in the Sims 4 at all because they're very annoying, but they I just don't really have a lot of fun with them. Besides, however, I did have a lot of fun with vampires and werewolves. I just don't want any more in my family tree because they're crazy. But um, the new gen, who's going to be the style influencer, actually has the dormant werewolf gene, thankfully. So that way we won't have like any werewolf activity happening, but we'll do something midway through somehow. I don't know, but we'll figure something out. But since they have the dorm dormant werewolf gene, we'll be okay. And I find with the style of influencer career, I've never played it before besides like one time, but didn't really fully invest into it is that this one where we roll to be style influencer, but we have to have four kids, four kids. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And we're going to figure out a lot of things along the way. 
and hopefully we don't lose our mind in the process. Now, for the storyline, it says memories are so important to you, you make sure to photograph every moment. This means taking at least one picture of your children at each stage of their life, which honestly, I wish we had like a way we could measure our kids as they get taller, like an infant and then a toddler and then a child and a teen, like on a board somewhere or like a, a door to like measure them. That would be so cute. But at each stage, you have to photography every pet and also take pictures of your besties. And you want to display them everywhere on your house, which is a very good idea. And I can't remember when we got those photo frames, but I think we got them during growing together. I'm going to be utilizing those everywhere in the house to like show that we love our, our friends, our kids, our pets, like everything. Like it's very, very important to us to capture these moments to show that these generations lived a very long life, but they had a different life other than ours. So since we are in this career, we have to basically randomize all of our outfits three times and create a sim, but with the black and white filter on our computer screen. So we will randomize everything. We can't see any color of any kind, the makeup, the outfits, the hair, everything. So we might be looking like a jackalope adjacent on the 4th of July, like not on a good 4th of July, like a very bad 4th of July. So we might be looking crazy, but you know, we'll make it a trend and hopefully everyone will like it. But we have to reach level 10 of the career and level 10 of charisma and photography, which will be very easy, I feel, because since we do have the way where kids can now gain adult skills as a child, it'll be a lot easier to gain charisma and the photography skill at the same time. So best of both worlds, I'm actually kind of excited to kind of play through this gen to see what the actual career is like all the way through to the last level. But if you ever want to watch the previous gens of like Not So Berry and the extended version and also the other gens for Career Legacy, I will link all those video playlists down below so you can kind of catch up to see the drama from the very beginning to the very like most recent video that I posted. And if you want to check out the challenges yourself, I will also link down the rules for the original rules of Not So Berry, the extended version, and also the career legacy. Because I find a lot of times legacy challenges are meant to be fun. And I think these two challenges I had a lot of fun with, and I think you all would like them. Even though Not So Berry is a little bit outdated, because it was made back in 2017, we didn't have packs back then, I think you can still find a way to make it interesting and add your own spin to it each gen. Um, so with that being said, this house has seen better days. And the idea was that it was a college frat house in the late 19, like 70s or whatever, where like everything was carpet, had weird furniture. And then over time, it just got more, more and more abandoned and people lived in there and added random furniture that wasn't supposed to be there. And that explains the mirror on the ceiling. Someone literally put it up there. And now it's stuck up there until we, you know, take it down and demolish it. But I will say this, it does add some spiciness to the house a little bit, if you know what I mean. Because I've seen too many movies where they have mirrors on the ceiling above their bed. And I'm like, that's just tacky. Why would you do that? That's just crazy. We're not living in the, in the dark ages. This is 2023, y'all. Take the mirrors off your ceiling. It just looks crazy. Because like, what if that falls on your bed while you're sleeping? There's glass everywhere. You don't want that. That's mess. Crime scene. No. Anyway, regardless, I will say this was probably my favorite house I have built in a long time since we got the Yeehaw pack. And also I'm trying to use like different items that I haven't really used before, even though I use the same landscaping and the same like outdoor decor objects that I like to use because they're very good to use on the outside. But when you like mix it up a little bit, add a little pizzazz of plants and whatever, you got a new home. But I don't really know what kind of style of house I really want to renovate it into. I still want to keep the outside yeehaw. I'll keep the same wallpaper and the same door, but not for the backside. I might change the, the backside door to something different. But then for the inside, take patch all the wall, holes in the wall, take out the rat hole in the wall, maybe do some more backsplash for the kitchen. Like, I really don't know. And I think we are on a 30 by 20 lot in Chestnut Ridge. So if you ever wanted to download this house, it's on the gallery for you all to download. My origin ID is just Spring Sims or whatever you want to call it. Gallery name, origin ID, EAID, 
it's all the same. It's just Spring Sims, like all of my original handles on social media. But I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. What is the largest legacy family you've ever had in The Sims? Like in the entirety of the 23 years of The Sims, what is your largest legacy family number? Mine will be 17. I want to know what yours is because that way we can, you know, get ideas off of each other of what we did each gen and also get some inspo, what we could do for the next time. And I don't know, just have like a fun collaborative moment with each other. But with that being said, I'm going to show you the house in real time because that way you can going to see the craziness unfold. And I did add a few things that you did not see in the speed build. So let's go ahead and go to the game and I'll show you what I did. So like I mentioned, this house has seen better days than I thought the whole green vibe of the wallpaper, the roof, everything on the inside with carpet just made sense. Green, mold, abandoned, broken, yeehaw. It just was plain and simple that I had to go with the theme all around the house. So with this gen, we have to have four kids and I didn't think of it at the time. So I ended up actually only adding in two cribs and then I added in like a tent outside. That way when the kids age up over time, they'll have somewhere to sleep. And I might add in a basement somewhere, maybe on the outside. So that way they have more places to sleep or just have like a little, you know, nectar cellar so we can make nectar for the future to make money and then eventually renovate our house over time. Now, this house only has two bedrooms and two bathrooms and the whole inside is pretty much closed off all around the board. I was gonna open up the dining room and living room, but I felt closing it off made more sense. I think over time when we renovate it, I might open up this wall and then open up this wall here. That way it feels a little bit more, you know, airy and more in together, like more inclusive with all the people coming in and out of the house every time. But I did like the idea of like putting green in every single room. So we have like green paintings, green curtains, green chairs, green carpet. Oh, also the other thing too, um, we have a green ceiling as well. Um, we can paint our ceiling in the Sims 4 with the base game, by the way, if y'all didn't know, they added that in a while back ago with the Yeehaw pack. It's a great feature. Now, the reason why I did this was because generation 16 of Career Legacy, the storyline said I had to put carpet in every single room, including the ceiling and outside, that we were going to move into this house, but we're so deep into the challenge already in the career that it made no sense to live here. And I thought next gen could live here and renovate the house over time as a style influencer that the storyline just made sense. And I just really love how I did each and every room. I did this all on stream. So if you want to go watch the VOD back, you can. I'll link the VOD down below. But I wanted to add in a lot of like antique furniture, old curtains, old everything to signify that it was like an old college house that people lived here back in the 70s and that carpet and this didn't really keep it, you know, up kept over time. But the kitchen is the one that kind of got remodeled semi when people lived here in like the late 1990s and just kind of kept the backsplash, added in like new cabinets and counters and you know new appliances of course to make it more livelier I guess but I love the kitchen it's very small very quaint and I will definitely expand this kitchen over time because it is a small kitchen but then over here we have like our general like office room that was made for the engineer career but I might switch this out and put like a desk and like maybe like an easel or like whatever we need for the style influence the career we'll like swap out the stuff for um for that career in this room and then we have our little side bathroom downstairs the aka guest bathroom or hallway bathroom that people can use and then upstairs we have pretty much where everyone sleeps and I have to tell you, I really love the basement treasure kit because it has a lot of antique, like old dusty furniture that you can really use in a lot of abandoned homes or warehouses that I love this mirror. It works as like a, you know, a standard mirror that we have in the game, but it just looks so ugly, like in a, ugly in a good way because like it's old and rustic and dusty, like, I don't know, ugly in a good way. But I like the mirror. I love the little, little chairs we have over here. We have one pet named Bacon who will live forever. So Bacon will sleep outside in the hallway. And then we have our main bedroom over here with all our yeehawness. And of course our mirror on the ceiling that is from 
some pack that I can't remember, but I used Tool Mod by Twisted Mexi to put it on the ceiling. And of course, once you download the house, you don't need any mods of any kind to download it. I just used a mod to do what I need to do. So hopefully that's like not confusing. But again, no mods were used unless like I used custom content, which I did not. But yeah, either way, this is the kid's bedroom. This is our main bedroom. And then we have our other little bathroom over here, which what is this on the floor? Unbeatable stain. When did I add that? Oh, wow. Oh, oh, that's, it's from the basement treasure kit. I don't remember putting that there, but it works. But this is our backyard, which is nothing. We have our grill and our picnic table and some like recycling bins and that's pretty much it. But the one thing I always forget to put in all of my houses is like the sprinkler system. And supposedly it actually helps all of your Sims to prevent fires in your house. Like let's say your Sim, Eliza Pancakes, tries to burn down the house, trying to make pancakes at cooking level two and starts a fire. But luckily they'll have this and a fire sprinkler will go off and, you know, cure all fires that were happening in the home. But that's a really good item. Everyone should put that in their house. No matter what it looks like, add it in. It will save you all of your Sims money and time. Trust me. But overall, this is the entire house. I think it looks pretty snazzy for what it is like right now. That over time, it will be done and renovated and looking a little bit better. So hopefully, we'll have enough funds in the household to make it look good and not trashy. But with that being said, I do hope you all enjoyed today's video. Please let me know down in the comments below of how many generations you've had in The Sims overall. Because personally, for me, 17 generations is huge for me. But I want to know how many generations you've had in your Sims gameplay. But as always, I hope you all enjoyed it and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!